Hi everyone, Aran Stern here with a new tutorial. This time we are going back to the basics to explore a couple of workflows for using the pen tool in After Effects. Recently I found myself doing a lot of rotoscoping work using the pen tool and I thought I might share with you a few tips and shortcuts to help you in your own project. By the way, if you're looking for a full training about rotoscoping, I highly recommend this DVD from Creative Cow Master Series by Pete O'Connell, Advanced Rotoscoping Techniques for Adobe After Effects. And if you're here, you might want to check out his new DVD for motion tracking and stabilizing. Good stuff. And as you know me, I can't resist plugging in my own titles as well. So make sure to check them when you are in the cow store as well. Anyhow, this lesson will not cover everything there is to know about masking in After Effects, but it would unfold few nice methods and shortcuts for using the paint tool efficiently. So, the basic purpose of this tool is to create customizable shape which is different than what you get with the built-in mask shape tools that we have here. The main shortcut for selecting the paint tool is the letter G. And if you continue to press it one time after the other, then it will toggle between the different options. The principles of the pen tools are more or less the same for most of Adobe's software such as Illustrator, Photoshop, Flash, and even InDesign got one. So the knowledge you'll gather here will be useful among those applications as well. So for most of the times, you'll use the pen tool to create mask or masks around the areas which you want to hide from your image but sometimes you'll only need to draw an open path to work with. I'll show you both example and point you to some gotchas as well. Here I'll need to select the layer in my timeline as I want to mask it and let's just start to draw the mask. If you don't select anything, it will generate new shape tool which is also nice and useful but doesn't serve what I need in this example. So I'll make sure to select my layer here. And at first, when I create new path, the default behavior is to create straight lines. Adding the shift modifier will constrain your dots to 45 degrees. Now note that there are different icons near the pen tool as you use it. These little icons tell you what the next action is going to be. For example, when I reach the first point that I started to create my mask, I get a tiny O shape, which tells me that if I will click here, it will close this path. The minus sign, of course, will delete a point, while the plus sign will add a point. And these points are also known as anchor points. And they can also have handles and work as a Bezier curve or corner point. Okay, let me show you everything. So if you want to convert a corner point to Bezier after you created the mask, you can either use the last option of the tool, which is the Convert Vertex tool, or you can hold down Option or Alt as long as the pen tool is still highlighted. And then if you click on a point, you will change it from corner to curve. Another click on the same point using the same modifier, we'll change it back. If you want to do the same while the selection tool is highlighted, just add the command or the control key. By the way, in this case, I have here a beverage bar which I need to mask. I only want to mask one side of it, as my titles will be visible just behind it on the wall uh, behind. More on that in a moment, but now let's see another way to work. Instead of drawing straight lines and then convert them to a curve point, you can draw the curves as you work by holding down the mouse after you click it and then moving it to one side or the other. Let me first clear the mask using another cool shortcut. This will only work if your selection tool is highlight. So make sure it is and then you can hold down Alt and press on one of the anchor points and it will select all the points for you. Now we can modify them all together or I can delete them and start from scratch. 
So this time I'll start to draw a new mask around the right side of this bar and create the Bezier curves as I go. I'll keep the mouse down and pull the handle to the desired place. This method is much faster, but it does need some practice. Of course, I also recommend zooming in as we want to be more precise when we're doing such work. Another tip here is to hold command or control as you draw your path. This will let you move the last point after you set it in place and it can help you to work faster as you go. Now, as soon as you finish, you once again get the little circle sign if you want to close it. For the moment, let's leave it open and just click away or press F2 to deselect everything. Now, I'll reselect the whole layer because I want to point your attention to the direction of the path or as After Effects call it, the first vertex of this path. If you look closely, you can see that one of the points has a bigger icon than the rest. This means that it will be the first point of this path. So, for example, if I add an effect to this layer, and in order to demonstrate it, I'll choose the stroke effect, which uses mask to operate on, and then I'll apply to my layer and set the brush size to a higher number, and just scrub the end value here, then you will notice that the animation starts from this bigger anchor point and travel along this path. Now for this example it's fine, but what if you want to change this starting point? For example you have a letter shape on the screen and this is not the correct point to start the animation from. When this is the case, you can select the desired point on the path and then right click on it and from the context menu choose Mask and Shape Path and from there choose set first vertex. Then scrub the effect to see the result. Of course, this trick will work on a closed path as well. The reason I left it open is just to show you how easy it is to continue to draw this path if you'll need to. So let's get rid of the effect and then reselect the path. Now hold down command or control and click on the point that you want to draw from. Make sure the pen tool is still selected and just continue to add points or just close your path. Okay, now here's a few more quick tips before we'll wrap this one up. Say you want to break the connection between the handles. If your pen tool is still selected, then first make sure that the point is busy by pressing on the Alt key and then you can pull out the handles. Then, if you press the Alt or Option key again and click on one of the handles, it will let you pull each one of them on its own. If for that matter the Selection tool is highlighted, you can add the Control or Command key to pull this one. A moment ago we saw that context clicking on the mask shape with the Pen tool or the Selection tool for that matter enables the context menu of options for this mask including all of its settings on the timeline. One of the important things here is the motion blur settings for this mask. Changing this value can unlock this mask motion blur from the layer itself. Another significant behavior is when you double click to get the free transform for the entire mask or for selected points. Then it is necessary to switch to the selection tool, which you can do either by pressing V or by holding, as I said before, command or control while you double click the vertex. Note that the control or command key toggles back and forth between the pen and the selection tools regardless of which one is currently active. Also, if you want to select the region between two keyframes, you can just press and modify the lines between them and drag it to the desired location. When you're trying to rotoscope something, a useful way of working, for my opinion, is first to draw your mask using the regular pen tool, the same way I show you now, and then select all the points, right click, and convert them to Roto Bezier. Then reshape the points if necessary using the same shortcuts as I told you, but this time we don't have any handles to worry about. You only need to define the stiffness of the curve. So hold down Alt and drag the corner until you get where you want it to be. 
When I have a RotoBZM mask in place, it is much easier to create a predictable rotoscope without worrying about corner or BZM points all over the place. But then again, this might vary with each footage you're going to use. In the case that we have here, I'll set a keyframe for the mask path and then quickly step 10 frames ahead each time by pressing the shift plus page down and move the mask to the correct place. I'll remind you that we are only interested in isolating the right side of this bar. And when I'm done to create this animation, I can always set a lower mask expansion also accompany with a little bit of feather to mix it together perfectly. Once this task is done, I'll unshine the other layers I've got here in this timeline. So, as you see, we've got two more layers. Layer number three is the exact duplicate of this beverage clip without the mask that we've created, of course. And sandwiched between them is some text with few position keyframes to emulate some of the perspective from the wall behind. So now we can create a quick run preview just to check if all the work we did using the pen tool was good enough. Well, to me it looks perfect, and I hope you find this information useful. If you only learn one thing from this tutorial, I hope it was a worthy one. If you learn two things, well, then even better. And if you learn more than that, I guess it is a great day for you, sir or ma'am. Whatever happens, I hope I lay a nice path for you to follow. So until next time we'll meet, this is Ran Stern for Creative Cow saying goodbye.